In this video, we're gonna cover N64 emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. All right, everybody. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to fix an updated N64 core for the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. The default core in version 1.15 works as intended and gives you options to use Angry Line, Glide, and do everything that you normally could as shown in my original N64 setup video. But if you visit that core downloader and update the cores, it will replace the core that is currently in RetroArch with a non-angle version, thus rendering Glide unusable. So there are two options to fix this. You can uninstall RetroArch, reinstall it to get the old core back, or you could use a config file that uses Angry Lion to get functionality back. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the second one. Now, Angry Lion is a great way to experience N64 games as it is very accurate, but it does lack some of the bells and whistles such as upscaling, which a lot of people prefer. So Angry Lion isn't for everybody, but I'm gonna show you how to get it if you accidentally update that core. So let's dive in. Now, as we begin, you need to make sure that you have Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch installed. If you haven't done so already, there is a guide in my playlist here for how to do so. Link to this will be in the description below. And you'll also need to make sure that your USB drive is formatted properly to NTFS with proper security permissions. So I have that listed here under how to do it manually inside the setup guide, but there is also an automated program that you can use within Windows to do the process as well. And for any Mac users out there, you can run a Windows VM to get it set up as well. So all these videos will be linked in the description below for you to get everything set up properly to continue along with this guide. Next, we're going to download the config file for Moopin64 Plus next. So this is the one that I have made myself on an older version of RetroArch and it's still working just fine. So link to this will be in the description below, but we're just gonna go ahead and get it downloaded. Next, you're gonna need to source some N64 games if you haven't done so already. So there are a number of different formats N64 games can be in. They could be in Z64, N64, bin. You can zip them up if you wanna save on space. So I just have mine in extracted N64 and Z64 format. Don't think I have any bin ones in here right now. I do not, but there we go. So anyone with a large physical collection of N64 games and you wish to dump those, I do have a tutorial on the channel using the Retro Blaster programmer to back up your N64 games and saves and you can use those within RetroArch. It's pretty friggin' awesome. So a link to that will be in the description below as well. Alternatively, you can resort to Google, but as always, illegal download links are not gonna be provided on this channel. Well, once you have your N64 game source, we just need to add them to our USB drive that we use on Xbox RetroArch. So I have created a new USB drive here specifically for this tutorial because it just has nothing on it. It's a blank slate. So we're just gonna add our N64 games in here. And there we go, those are now copied over. So we're gonna hold off on this Moopin64 Plus Next config file for a moment, just because I'm going to show you what happens if you try to run N64 games by default. We're just gonna go ahead and pull this USB drive out of the computer and move it over to the Xbox. All right, so over on your Xbox Endeavor retail mode, doesn't matter, get that USB drive inserted. And if it's the first time you've put it in, make sure that you select media so you don't get everything deleted. But gonna go ahead and boot into RetroArch. I've already got everything configured to run from USB. But I'm just gonna go into load content and load up an N64 game. All right, we're just gonna try to load up 007. The world is not enough. And we're gonna choose Moopin64 Plus next. So as previously stated, if you are running a fresh install of RetroArch 1.15, it should load up as expected using the Glide plugins. And that is because you are on Moopin64 Plus next version 2.4, which is a angle version of the core. But if you have visited the online updater, gone to the update installed cores option, or gone back into the core downloader and downloaded the newest version of Moopin64 Plus Next, that's gonna bring your Moopin64 Plus Next core up to version 2.5, which relies on Vulkan and OpenGL, so it will no longer work by default, thus the point of this video. So now when I go to load an N64 game, so I'm gonna just go ahead and use 007 The World Is Not Enough again because you saw that it previously loaded. And there we go, failed to load content. Now again, this is relatively easy to fix, so let's just go ahead and quit out of RetroArch, pull our USB drive out of the Xbox and move it back over to the computer momentarily. All right, so now with the USB drive back in your computer, you can head into your RetroArch folder. 
your config folder and you'll see that Moopin64 Plus Next has created a folder inside of it. And you'll see Moopin64 Plus Next.opt and hey, that matches the one we just downloaded. So now we can just simply drag it in, replace it. There we go. Now let's move back over to the Xbox. All right, so gonna get that drive inserted here. Head back into RetroArch. And now this time when we go to load content, it loads right up using the Angry Lion plugin. And here we are playing 007 World is Not Enough on the Angry Lion plugin of RetroArch on Xbox Series X and S. But once you've been able to successfully load N64 content, you can now just make a playlist, import content, manual scan, choose your content directory where your N64 games are stored, system name, um, weird that it's not showing me all the systems right now, that's all right, whatever, we'll just do custom and just type it out, I guess, for this example. But anyway, Nintendo, space dash space, Nintendo, 64. All right, now for default core, we're gonna go ahead and go down to Nintendo here and choose Moopin64 Plus Next. There you are. Scan recursively set to on, so it'll check subfolders if you happen to have them. And then make sure you turn scan inside archives on if you have your games zipped up. And then just start the scan. And now you'll have your new N64 playlist here on the left. And if you have your games named correctly with a game name and region code, chances are you'll be able to download a thumbnail for it. So you could do that as well if you want, but not necessary. And then to play a game from the playlist, all you need to do is select it and tell it to run. And there we go, GoldenEye 007 up and running from our playlist on the Xbox Series S version of RetroArch. But from here, let's go ahead and talk about the core options we can configure that won't break stuff on the updated version of Moopin64 Plus Next. So heading into our RetroArch Quick menu, if we head down to Core Options here, we're gonna leave the RDP plugin alone because we're gonna have to have this set to Angry Lion, otherwise it will not work. So within our Angry Lion options, my config file is using an unfiltered look by default, so that way it just looks a little bit sharper. But if you want to have the more traditional N64 look, you can change it over to filtered and it gives you that uh, typical N64 look. Next up, threaded sync level, leave this one on low. Otherwise it will just be too demanding for the Xbox Series X and S CPU. Multi-threading, leave this on all threads. And then finally hide overscan. This will help remove garbage data on the sides of your screen. But moving on, we're gonna leave our CPU core alone, our RSP plugin alone. Frame duplication, you can turn this one on. It can help give a smoother appearance in some N64 titles. Next, we have frame rate. So this is an overclocking option. And results will vary on this per game with Angry Lion. Since Angry Lion is so demanding, you might not see much of a speed boost at all just because the emulation is already pushing the Series X and S CPU on a number of games. And then the same thing with the VI refresh, you can set this one to an overclock as well, but chances are you probably won't see much of a result. Next up, we have Disable Expansion Pack. By default, it emulates an expansion pack. If you wanna see what games did without the expansion pack, you can turn this option on. Otherwise, just leave it off. And we're gonna go ahead and skip over the next three options. You're not gonna need them and head over to Pack and Controller Options. So first up, we have our Analog Dead Zone and Analog Sensitivity, so with an Xbox controller, I usually set this to zero or five. And then the sensitivity, I typically change it up to about 105. Can't quite remember off the top of my head, I apologize. But we're gonna skip over all this C button stuff and move down to player one, two, three, four packs. So this is how you switch between your memory pack, rumble pack, and transfer pack. So for anyone interested in transfer pack stuff, the instructions to use it are as follows. If you want to try using the transfer pack on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch, there's two methods of doing so. One is to rename your Game Boy save file and the ROM file into specific formats. So, for example, they have Pokemon Stadium. Here's the N64 game. 
then they renamed the Game Boy Save File Pokemon Stadium .z64 .save, and then they renamed the Game Boy ROM Pokemon Stadium .z64 .gb. That way, all of them have basically the same title, and when you load up the game, it has the transfer pack stuff enabled automatically. Or a method I think is a little less convoluted. Open up your RetroArch Saves folder, rename your Game Boy Save of choice from SRAM to Save. Then you load up the core. Then you go to Subsystems and load up the Game Boy Save. Load up the Game Boy Game. And then load up the N64 game. And then when you load it up, it will be all set. A bit convoluted, but the setup steps are here. So again, you can do that for players 1 through 4. And with that, our core options are complete. So if there's settings you want to have set for some games but not others, such as dedicated rumble packs, memory packs, or transfer packs, head up to manage core options and save them as a game options file. So that way they only apply to the game in question. But heading down here, let's go take a look at our shaders options. So from here, you can enable video shaders by turning the option on and make sure you have downloaded shaders from the online updater. And then from here, you can click on load, shaders slang, and there's a number of different options that will be available to you. So one of my favorites to use is CRT Easy Mode. I think it just gives a good overall result, especially with unfiltered N64 content. Like, that actually looks really freaking good. So despite it being native resolution, like, that looks really sick. Now, as always, there's no such thing as the perfect shader, so just use ones that you enjoy. And once you've found one that you really like, you can head back into the shader tab, click on the save button here, and save them as a core preset or a game preset, so that way every time you load up a game in N64, that's what's gonna greet you. But that's gonna do it as far as fixing N64 emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch if you happen to update the core. Again, you could uninstall the whole program, reinstall it to get the old core back if desired. But Angry Lion is a good solution considering it is just a lot easier to get most games set up. You don't have to mess with a bunch of settings, but you do miss out on some more advanced features that I know many people like. So choice is yours. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your N64 emulation back up and running on your Xbox Series X and S to your desire. But here at the end, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are the truest of champs, and we couldn't do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.